What's the best way to fight a war? Afghanistan is now America's longest war ever. President Trump says he'll send in more soldiers. But this man says that's not the route to victory. I've laid out this plan, this alternative, that comes in at less than 8% of what the Pentagon is spending. Eric Prince founded Blackwater, a private military contractor. Contractors train people how to shoot accurately, respond to dangerous situations. This is a promotional film for the contractor that now owns Prince's old training ranges. The U.S. military pays private contractors to do all kinds of things. Provide security, deliver mail to remote bases, send them back up to rescue soldiers. The government admits that private contractors do the jobs well, often for half what the military would spend. We did a helicopter resupply mission where we embarked our helicopters on board a U.S. military supply ship. And we showed up to do that job with two helicopters and eight people, replacing the Navy who was doing it with two helicopters and 35 people. Why would the Navy use 35 people? The admiral that says, I need 35 people to do that mission, didn't have to pay for them. And when you get a free good, you use a lot more of it. Government not only wastes money, it does things slowly. In Afghanistan right now, a troop in contact, fighting for their lives, can't drop a bomb without a lawyer sitting in Qatar, a thousand plus miles away, to give them permission to drop that bomb. And it's just not a serious way to wage warfare. But that's done because bombs were dropped in the wrong place, killing civilians, and we made new enemies. War is hell. War is risky and it's dangerous, but if we're gonna entrust our people to put them into harm's way, you have to have the confidence to back them up to support them doing it. Bureaucracy also makes it hard for the military to adapt to changing threats. We spent close to a trillion dollars, largely using equipment that was designed to fight against the Soviet Union but it's been misused fighting against pickup trucks and people living in local villages. You'd think if you spent a lot to get the Soviets, it would work on terrorists. A supersonic jet that's designed to go state on state and with, with standoff missile capability and all the rest is not necessary for finding effectively enemies that are living in caves or operating from pickup truck. It's a totally different- uh, The military adjusts. No, they do not, clearly in 16 years of warfare, the army has never adjusted how they do deployments. They've never made them smaller and more nimble. You could actually do all the counterinsurgency missions over Afghanistan with propeller-driven aircraft. President Trump decided not to take Prince's suggestions. I think I know a reason why. People just don't like you, don't like the idea of mercenaries. The media doesn't like markets, period. But markets have a way of providing things when government can't. The Flying Tigers in World War II. The Flying Tigers, brave volunteers who blaze a new path to glory. Before America entered World War II, some American pilots made extra money fighting the Japanese in China. These Flying Tigers were considered heroes. They even made a John Wayne movie about it back then. It was not such a disparaged topic always. In fact, mercenaries helped create America. Jamestown, Plymouth, Massachusetts Bay, all paid for private security. In the Revolutionary War, the Continental Congress authorized privateers, privately owned boats, to fight the British ships. Privateers raided 600 ships and kept the loot. Although most private contracting has gone well, in Iraq, there were violent exceptions. Blackwater security guards shot more than 30 unarmed Iraqis. 10 years ago, Security guards from the firm Blackwater opened fire on a crowded square in Baghdad. 14 Iraqi civilians died. Four of Prince's soldiers were convicted of voluntary manslaughter. The fact is the guys did more than 100,000 missions, protective missions, in dangerous war zones, and less than one half of 1% of all those missions did the guys ever discharge a firearm. Wholesale corruption and finally murder, a full-fledged criminal enterprise. Grossly inaccurate. The sad thing is, the hardcore anti-war left went after the troops in Vietnam. In the Iraq war, largely Afghanistan, they went after contractors. They killed so many innocent civilians in so many different areas. Contractors providing a good and service to support the U.S. military mission, uh, vilified, demonized because they were for-profit companies. Prince eventually sold Blackwater. Then he came up with a new idea, fighting pirates. Remember that Tom Hanks movie about a ship hijacked by pirates? 
I'm the captain. I'm the captain now. Such piracy was once common. Somali pirates have seized eight vessels. The film The Somali Project documents Prince's plan to create a private army that would fight pirates. He got the United Arab Emirates to fund it. The establishment hated the idea. The UN called it a brazen violation of its arms embargo. But Prince went ahead anyway. Now we're going to start how to wear boots. Put on your socks. Put on all the socks. Everybody. The private army went after the hijackers' bases. We'll seize three different objective areas. The cameras caught that as it happened. <laughs> Whenever pirates came close to shore, the mercenary army attacked them. They freed lots of people who'd been held hostage by pirates. In a few years, the private army, plus private ship owners finally arming themselves, drastically reduced piracy. In 2010, Somali pirates took more than 1,000 hostages. In 2014, no hostages. Did you know about this? I didn't. It got no publicity. The media do not want to report good things about private militaries. You've had all the success. You've made money doing things more efficiently. But I would say most Americans hate you for it. They despise Eric Prince the most notorious defense contractor of them all, Blackwater, and its founder, Eric Prince. Eric really Prince. Is, he really is the poster child for everything wrong about the military industrial complex. He's just horrible. It's largely ignorance, okay? This idea that it's, that it's immoral to try to make money or to try to innovate or to build a better mousetrap. I mean, innovation is what's made America. They say it's immoral to make money killing people. Well, preparing U.S. military people to do their best on their mission is not immoral. What is their better solution? Their solution is to take the profit out, have it run by government. And that's why we spent close to a trillion dollars and are still losing.